So after waking up this morning, I remembered, oh yeah, I put out a new video last night, let's go check to see how it's doing. And I certainly didn't expect it to have garnered almost 5,000 views overnight. It's easily my most successful video within that time period ever. So thanks to everyone for giving it a view, even all you people that downvoted it, I still love you. Also, I want to give a shout out to someone who severely disliked the Horizon Zero Dawn background footage on yesterday's video. You're quite welcome. Because I got some more for you today. Haha. <laughs> Kind of as a follow-up to that piece, I wanted to discuss how Ryzen quad cores should be priced. There are a number of things to consider, the usuals like clock speed, the availability of multi-threading, and of course, whether or not AMD will be using harvested octa-core chips to fill this purpose. On the latter, I've already exclaimed the merits as to why quad-core Ryzen should be native quad-core dies. While they wouldn't exactly be half the size of the current Ryzen 7 chips, their much reduced physical size, probably just under two-thirds that of Ryzen 7, would allow AMD to produce at least 50% more chips per wafer. Main takeaway is that quad-core Ryzen can more directly and even undercut the prices of Intel quads that are much bigger due to their integrated graphics arrays. On top of that, Core i3s will be stumped by quad Ryzen in terms of value and computing capability with a comparable amount of die space fully dedicated to CPU processing. Native quad-core Ryzen also comes with the benefits of better power efficiency and less current leakage experienced with harvested processors, making low TDP versions of Ryzen a reality for applications that call for them. This further expands the market for the processor that a harvested chip could not fill. Despite the benefits, AMD, for all we know, is probably accumulating plenty of processors with enough components failing the test that comprise in the binning process in which case AMD will probably want an outlet for chips that may still have a fully functioning CCX. Even 6-core versions of Ryzen 7 are slated to be on the way, an unsurprising move, as AMD has been harvesting CPUs since the first generation Phenom days. With this in mind, I'm almost expecting AMD to release at least initially quad-core Ryzen's as harvested chips, with native quads coming down the pipeline. By doing this, AMD still gains some revenue from the dies that otherwise would be completely wasted while delivering the quad cores the masses are expecting in a reasonable amount of time. As with past products, there is still the possibility of users unlocking CPU cores that have been disabled. The caveats with harvested chips is generally power usage that can reflect that of a fully functioning chip and sometimes even higher TDPs if the chip was harvested and binned for power consumption and clocking reasons, not just component functionality. But at what price? For starters, the top-end i7-7700K sits around the $320 to $350 price mark, depending on where you live and who you buy from. Going by the benches I talked about in yesterday's quad-core Ryzen video, a single Ryzen CCX at a generally max sustained clock of 4.0 GHz trades blows with a 7700K that has been downclocked, repeat, downclocked, to match the Ryzen chips at 4 GHz themselves. The Intel chip normally runs at 4.2 with boost up to 4.5. I seriously doubt a harvested Ryzen chip would be able to sustain these clocks, perhaps even a native quad, so AMD cannot match the price of the 7700K. Furthermore, the lowest end available Ryzen chip with its 8 cores, the 1700, sits in this similar price range to the 7700K. There is no sensibility in pricing quad-core Ryzen at more than 90% of the 7700K's price, as at best we should expect 90% of the Intel CPU's performance. There is also determining where hexa-core Ryzen's will be priced in this market hierarchy, as well as Intel making further slashes to the MSRP of their products. In reference to Ryzen's performance clock-to-clock, core-to-core performance at a factory binned 4.0 GHz, whether die harvested or native quad-core, I expect the fastest quad-core Ryzen's to be $250 at max, and that's only if they can hit 4.0 GHz or greater clocks, as the cheapest KB Lake quads without hyper-threading in their i5 form are just under $200. This is also under the stipulation that SMT gives the Ryzen quad-core a big advantage over the i5. If SMT does not give it a big advantage in most applications, then $250 is simply too much to ask for for this processor. In which case, I would retract the $250 estimate and expect quad-core Ryzen to come in at, at $200 MSRP. Though realistically, I should say $199 MSRP because a number just below $200 sounds a lot more comfortable than $200 or the $250 price point I first discussed. 
Also, I think to most people, $200 represents that threshold between more value-oriented CPUs like the i3s and maybe the lowest clocked i5s and more gaming-related products like the more middle-end and high-end i5 processors. And this could signal the end of the dual core as a gaming-capable processor, even though in reality it'll be perfectly usable for gaming for a while, but once again, it could psychologically signal to consumers that a quad core would be the bare minimum you should be buying if you plan on gaming on your PC. And as I've mentioned before plenty of other times, especially if we consider native quad core Ryzen, AMD does not have to make up the cost of the IGP die space until chips do. Just like with Ryzen 7's undercutting the hell out of 6 and 8 core Intel chips, AMD should do the same thing across their entire line. Now when comparing Ryzen to Cable 8 Core i3s, the value proposition as a CPU arguably hits its greatest apex. At a comparable size to Cable Lake i3s, a native Ryzen quad-core will pack four CPU cores to the Core i3s too. The budget-friendly i3-7100 at 3.9GHz sits around $120 with a top-end 7350K at $180, a price that is not that far off from the cheapest i5s. Knowing all that we know about Ryzen's capabilities and possible quad-core die size, there's no reason for AMD not to directly fight the cheaper Core i3s in their own playground with lower-clocked quad-core Ryzen's, whether with preserved SNT or not. For system builders looking for CPUs in the $150 price range, Ryzen Quad will not be beat unless Intel makes some very deep cuts to their lineup, and I expect sub 3.0 GHz Ryzen Quads to skirt as low as $100. If AMD makes native quad-core Ryzen, and if it's possible to bend separate cores on the CCX, we could see three and two-core variants of Ryzen, perhaps in a possible revival of the Sempron brand. Just like with partially functional Ryzen 7 dies, it would put to use Ryzen quad dies that otherwise would go wasted, and could further take the fight to Intel's Pentium chips, another market that AMD could have a fighting chance in. So take what I discussed with a grain of salt with some garlic and some paprika too. What I've discussed are logical scenarios, but by all means things can change. The biggest kicker is whether or not Ryzen Quad will be native or harvested, or perhaps both, as AMD might need the time to ramp up production of Ryzen Quads, and will offer harvested Ryzen 7 chips until they are ready. The biggest thing is I hope you guys enjoy this, and until next time, stay civil, stay respectful, but stay curious. Hasta luego!